As the next step of my research, I decided to uh, have closer look at the pattern, which uh, I saw in many, many species. And uh, for these purposes, I, I just pick up uh, level one normalized uh, sum matrix, transform it into one and zeros, and just put it to Excel table. And that's how it's easy to analyze this. And I extract a particular this uh, pattern from this Excel table. And what I can see that this uh, common pattern contains four, it's again four, again, again, and again, four and four and four everywhere. It contains four separate patterns, which again has number four everywhere. For example, uh, first pattern has uh, one stripe, the second has four stripes, then 16 stripes, and this has 64 stripes. And this width of this stripe is 16, and width of here is 4, and width in here is 1. And uh, I try to put all this in, in, in one table, and um, I decided to uh, call this square shaped uh, by the border thickness uh, as S16, S4, S1, and uh, the fence shape has thickness 1, and I decided to call it F1. And if you can see uh, how I explained it, it's uh, everywhere um, magnitude of 4 transformation. Even offset, which they have, it has magnitude of 4. It's like 28, 32, 8, and 2. That's that's amazing. That's amazing for me that everything is in a quaternary digital system and everywhere at the basic of life we see number 4 practically everywhere. And uh, when I thought about this, when I look closely at some... Um, Mm, matrix, I can see something from this side and so uh, I can for example for symmetric keepsake uh, I would can imagine that maybe this pattern will be uh, right after all I can imagine anything I want right now <laughs> and uh, now I see the main goal uh, is to find biological meaning of the patterns. And that's where your ideas are uh, very, very welcome. Any hypothesis are welcomed. Now, I decided to use some matrix patterns. Probably I can find boundaries of genes. But for this, I need to know more about genetics, about DNA, chromosome, genes, at least what is gene and how they define it. And uh, what I found out was very frustrated for me because um, I figure out that genetic is a very experimental science. Uh, they do not have any kind of, I would say, informational mathematical definition for genes. Uh, this uh, experimental definition, something which produces uh, proteins. So they made an experiment. This particular uh, nucleotide um, produced, 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 produced uh, pro proteins. This is not produced. This is, means this is end of gene. Uh, it's definitely not enough for me for understanding how I can. Um, check where the gene starts and ends. And uh, then I figure out that unlike information technology, which in the uh, last 50, 60 years became very mature science and technology, I cannot say the same about genetics because uh, they did tremendous job in sequences, uh, in sequencing of um, genomes but after all, they put it in not very well organized structures. And every company, every university, every um, entity which has um, such a genetic research, they have their own terminology, their own databases, and uh, probably their own uh, formats for storing information. 
and that was very frustrating for me. And um, the most I can, was able to find out that genes is only one and a half, maybe two percent of genome, and the rest, from their point of view, this is just junk DNA. Um, that's kind of a strange uh, because what they cannot uh, prove experimentally, they consider as junk. And as experimental science, um, they are able to make probably wrong conclusions. I, I uh, recollect all the uh, such a book called Physics are Joking. And there was such a joke about uh, experiments. For example, you uh, take a cockroach, put it on a table and fire a gun above it. And the cockroach runs away. Then you take a cockroach, pull out of its legs, all of its legs, put it on the table, fire a gun above it, cockroach doesn't run. And conclusion, cockroach here with their legs. That's kind of a wrong conclusion for experimental science. So I cannot take this conclusion for um, uh, the real true and what i find out even more because they even do not have a common name for genes because one, one gene like here for example one gene can have like a dozen names and uh, they they created i i try to find for example particular gene not particular gene i cannot find particular gene to find a particular gene I need practically to know name of disease which caused by destruction of this gene. This is kind of a vice versa for um, uh, search. Uh, and for example, what they have in uh, location, they have some uh, physical location practically. They say th this is a chromosome 6 and this is short arm of chromosome 6. And it has a region by somebody called 21.3. This is not very convenient thing for uh, searching anything. And um, I understand, after all, that we as information technologists and software professionals and them as biologists and uh, genetics has probably a very different goal. And their goal probably very noble uh, to find... Um, uh, genetic disorders and know how to fight these disorders unlike us which we would like to explore how it should work and how it was originally programmed and but i i can ridicule uh current uh, genetics uh for as long as i can probably but i know one greatest achievement which they have they made all their genetic databases public and free and um, that gives a uh, ability to another person amateurs like me to look at this data from very different angle angle probably they never could predict themselves and now i try to imagine how it is possible at all to explore unknown program for unknown operating system running unknown instruction set on unknown PC. How it's possible at all. And in my blog, I, I wrote um, kind of a fantasy essay uh, where I tried to imagine that some non-biological creatures, which I call um, the crystallites, I have to call them somehow. And this is the crystallites uh, came to Earth to uh, search for life on this Earth and to explore this life. And from their point of view, life on Earth is our electronic devices. And what they can do with it, uh, they can uh, sequence the sequence of commands and see how it um, can work. So, first of all, they, they um, found that... Um, our binaries, which stored somewhere in our on our electronic devices, which are living species from their point of view, 
and uh, say they found the programs uh, or executables in our terminology and they decided to call them same chromosome and uh, then they see that this executable have uh, some maybe common parts for different um, programs or for different chromosomes and uh, what we call libraries or DLLs, they decided to call chromosome region. And then they find that there is a, some pieces which are executable, uh, unlike uh, all other trash data. And they decided to call these pieces a gene, which we call function. And what they can do with these genes, which are functions from our point of view, they can cut out this function and put it for processing and to see what happens. And for example, they take one of such functions, put it to processing, and this PC, which is electronic device in, in our understanding, start uh, producing some sound, random sound, uh, fre re random frequency sound. Uh, because I assume that probably they are not aware about uh, um, incoming parameters. And so they take this function and name it random frequency sound producer and put it in the databases with their old descriptions. And then they decided um, what to do with this. And isn't it silly? Isn't it silly way to explore? You know, probably not. How else you can explore anything you have no idea about? But anyway, so far so good. But when you see this function and want to uh, make some uh, useful um, usage for this function, for example, uh, they don't need a free, uh, random frequency producer. They need particular um, frequency, for example, 440 Hz to produce. Can they do this? Yes, they can. They can change particular bytes inside this function randomly or in sequence and eventually they will replace incoming parameters with constant 440. And when they run such a function, it will produce uh, sound with the frequency they wanted, 440 Hz. But the problem is, when you put this function back into the library, this PC, which is this electronic device, will beeping instead of talking. And so it's understandable that it's very easy to damage uh, thing, but it's very hard to uh, predict what, what it's going to do uh, when you have only experimental data, when you do not have mm, knowledge about instruction set, about uh, operating system it's running on. And uh, I think after this, our, my imagine uh, crystallites decided not to touch this anymore because they're afraid of damage anything. But they try to explore already damaged parts of uh, um, these species, which in these damages can happen during some uh, copying from one species to another species. And they, for example, notice that some function, say, um, show spreadsheet on the um, screen. If you switch a couple bytes inside this function, uh, this function will work, but it will show only half of the spreadsheet on screen. And so they say, this is, this is a disease, this is a uh, gen gen genetic disorder. And they mm, classified it and uh, start calling it uh, spreadsheet in disease and put it in all the databases and description and start to find um, um, another uh, probable um, diseases in these electronic devices. And uh, I know that any analogy is bad as it's good or vice versa, as good as it's bad. And, but anyway, uh, I feel that approximately this happened to 
contemporary generics, what I described.